Hi guys, welcome to the video. Well here in the UK, shipping of RC model aircraft has become very expensive. Um, and I think this is mainly due because we're not in the European Union anymore and it's increased the shipping costs here. But um, I was quite shocked by the rise in prices and uh, some of the guys down at the flying field have been telling me how much it costs to ship the shipping costs. Um, for example, I was looking at a model in Hobby King uh, and it was only a fairly cheap, uh, almost ready to fly uh, model at £46 and the shipping was £50. And some of the guys tell me down the flying field, even when it gets here and you've paid that shipping, you still have more money to uh, pay to release it from customs. So it's become a bit difficult now. I mean, if you can't get your want in the UK, you've either got to pay a lot of money or look at other options. So one option to beat this shipping cost is to become increasingly popular, is to 3D print your own model aircraft. Now there's lots of um, around now, and as you can see I've got an example here. This is the one we're going to be talking about today, the Grom, and this is one I've printed previously on my previous printer, and it's a um, Mustang, uh, yellow tail. Uh, this will probably be about my fourth Mustang, I do like Mustangs. And uh, that's ready to go together, um, and as you can see the Grom here is all, all ready to uh, uh, fly. Now I was hoping to include a maiden flight in this video, but the weather in the UK at the moment is, uh, if it's dry, it's windy, and today it's actually blowing a gale outside. Uh, or if it isn't windy, it's raining, so we're not having much luck at the moment. What I'll do is I'll include that in the next video, um, the actual maiden flight. So it's, it's almost there, but just a few more bits to do on it. So what we're going to have a look at in this video is whether it's feasible for a newbie to start out 3D printing um, with a good 3D printer and a good uh, kit. Now, you, you hear some people say 3D printing is hard, you know, to, to get it right. Um, it can be, but if you choose the right printer and the right model, and this this one I would suggest is a good st starter model for 3D printing, and uh, a good 3D printer that's almost plug and play, then you're off to a good start. Now, just before we start, guys, a full disclaimer. The Creality Render 3 S1 that's here was sent to me by Creality for review um, after we had some discussions about what I was going to include in video. I didn't want to do a typical unboxing video because you know there's, there's loads of them on the internet and you know after you've seen one you've seen them all really. Um, but what I said to them that I would use it to make a 3D printed model and show you what you can do with it and, the, and from the stance of a newbie as well. So th this 3D printer here I haven't done any modifications at all. It's, it's, had, it's come straight out of the box and then it's gone on and printed this. And so that's what we're gonna do in the video, guys, is just go through some of the uh, assembly, the printing of the Grom, and then at the end of it, we'll, I'll give you um, an idea of the total printing time. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you might have seen my old uh, CR10 that was here um, and that's that's printed this Mustang here and to be honest this one was a bit tricky to print it's a, it's quite an old design in 3D printed and there's been quite some improvements in the way things are printed now but this was dead easy to print um, this one here yeah, I had quite a few failures on this but this one I didn't have any failures so we tackle it from the stance of a newbie with a getting a 3D printer straight out the box connect it up and then going off to printing this and I think, I think if you get a good printer and this model, you shouldn't have any problems in printing. So if that sounds inter interesting to you guys, stick around. So why did I choose the Ender 5S1, guys? Well, Creality didn't stipulate which printer I, uh, they were going to let me review. They just asked me. And I'd seen some reviews on this, and the reviews look quite promising. Um, one of the main reasons that attracted me to it was the printing speed. Now if you've done any 3D printing, you'll know that it does take quite some time to 3D print, especially when you're printing a, you know, some RC aircraft. Um, it can take a long time. And at the end of the video, I'll reveal the total print time for the Grom. Um, now this printer is, uh, it's got a real sturdy frame here. It's got an all metal uh, extruder which is good for printing uh, filaments, uh, you know, like uh, ABS and that, you know, more exotic filaments. And uh, the Grom is printed with PLA Plus uh, 
you know, which is quite easy to print. So that's one of the reasons why I, I chose the uh, Grom. Um, it's got a, an LCD display here, um, and the thing just works really well. Um, you know, I haven't had any uh, problems yet. What I've also ordered as well, I've ordered the, you can get an enclosure um, around here to help print in um, materials like ABS and carbon type materials where they need, they don't need to be in drafts. So I've got that on order. And I've also um, ordered some lightweight PLA as well. Uh, there's another model called the Gremlin, which I'll put a picture up, which is a bit smaller than the Grom, but that's printed in lightweight PLA. So we're gonna see how the Ender 5 does print in lightweight PLA as well. So that should be quite interesting. So it's, uh, it, it works really well. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, it, sh it should print up to 250 millimeters a second, and I will try pushing the speed up a bit later as well. But, um, one of the reasons I like the speed is, um, for safety reasons, I don't like leaving my printers running overnight. I mean, I, I think in some of the early days, you, you know, people had issues um, with the thermal runaway protection that wasn't enabled, and I did hear one case in, in, in the USA where a guy's house burnt down because of it. So. Uh, it's always put a little, uh, little thing in the back of my mind. So with the speed of this printing, you know, you can normally get most prints done in a reasonable amount of time. So uh, uh, some of them have been quite quick as well. Um, you'll see when I show you some initial test prints that were done in no time at all. So uh, that's one of the big advantages of printer is the printing speed, which we might even get faster as well. Um, it's got automatic bed leveling on there. Um, it's got the, uh, the Crowthy's version of the BL Touch just up there somewhere. There it is up there. And then uh, it just works really well. And it's got extra supports on the bed. This is an upgrade from what they used to call the uh, Ender 5. So it's got some real good improvements on it. And, and I've just been, you know, uh, really impressed with it. I haven't, f so far, I haven't found any faults with it at all. It just works, you know, straight out of the box. And as you'll see, so what we'll do is we'll put a, a quick little bit of um, assembly video on and show you the first test prints I did. And I had my grandkids, grandkids here this weekend. While they were watching their, their iPad, I built this, built this up in about an hour <laughs> and uh, had it running. And then the, they came through and uh, as you'll see, I printed them some little uh, trinkets. So guys, don't be confused by this machine behind. This is the foam cutter that I do all my uh, foam cutting, which you may have seen some of my videos on. Um, I've just put this here because this is the only spare space I've got at the moment. Because I'm, you know, I've got quite a smallish workshop, so it's, uh, you know, it's just utilising what space I've got. So everything's printed out fine, uh, no real problems. The only issue I, I've had is a little bit of stringing, um, which I managed to dial out in the uh, settings I just increased the retraction from uh, 0.8 to uh, 0.12 uh, you can see a little bit on some of the early parts that were that were cut just just in there but it's, it's quite easy to get out you just um, a little bit of heat with uh, uh, some hot air uh, gets rid of it on the uh, the wing tips which I did in white um, once I dialed that retraction out, you can see the difference there. If you look at the where the aerolon uh, goes there, there's no retraction there. And on some of these parts here, 
there's some retraction. These these will come off anyway. They're, they're just all made in one one setting. Uh, they're just all made in one print. So uh, yeah, so it's all gone really well. Um, I'm amazed at how well the parts fit. Um, so if we join uh, we join these two back parts together, and when we actually assemble them, there's some holes there where we put a little bit of filament in there and that lines it up. Um, there's a really good assembly video on, on the Grom from uh, Skyglide FPV and I'll link you to that. But these parts here go in the side. Um, I haven't, uh, all I've done is taken off the brim because most of this stuff has a brim. So if you look, that just fits in there absolutely perfect on that side and the same on the other side. So that fits in perfect like that. And then the motor mount was printed in uh, PETG and that printed on the end of three at S1 with absolutely no problem at all. I just dialed in the correct settings for the PETG and that's really strong and that slides in perfect and I've done absolutely nothing to that. So it's proving how good the end of, end of five S1 is and um, its accuracy. Uh, I'm really impressed with the printer. Yeah. So I'm going to use a flight controller uh, on it um, with iNav. So it'll be running iNav. iNav 6 just come out, but I, I think I'll just, I might, I've already got iNav 5 on there, but I think for test first flights, I'll just stick with iNav 5 for the time being. I've got a 40 amp speed controller here, a hobby wing one. This is a Matek 405 wing. Then I've got an ERS. Uh, receiver there uh, with the little aerial and then the motor the motor is the one recommended by um, Skyglide it's the Emax uh, I think it's uh, yeah 20 2807 so we've got some nine gram metal gear servos that are gonna go in and these are so all I need to do now is get it all assembled so by the magic of video uh, That'll be a few seconds for you, but it's going to be a, a little bit longer for me. So what we'll do now, we'll go on to the assembly section. So as you can see, it's all gone together really well. Um, a couple of places I've been a bit careless with the super glue, uh, the cyano. Um, but um, apparently a little bit of WD-40 on there, and leave it on for a few seconds, that should get it off, so I'll give that a try. Um, so we've got the servos in, the motor in. Uh, the inside, let's just take the hatch off. I did actually print the hatch uh, red originally and so here here's a red one and I think I actually prefer the black one on it just gives it a little bit more yeah but I've got a spare now so so we've got two hatches for it and they didn't take very long to print at all so that goes in like that and it screws in and there's a mount for it there so I've got the bit more to do in there it will come apart as well um, by undoing the, uh, the screws there I did make a slight boob on um, on this one here <laughs> I ended up gluing the fixing in so it wouldn't press to grab the carbon rod so I just drilled through into the carbon rod so it will still come out undo that one and out it comes so uh, I've got the iron now flight controller to go in there so a little bit more setting up so it's been really easy to print. The PLA Plus prints really well. So, uh, so that's F FPV Grom. So what we'll do now is I'll we'll go on to the summary and tell you what my um, my thoughts are on the end of five. As you might have guessed already, they're pretty good. And then I'll give you the total print time of that compared to the CR10. So guys, now we come to the end of the video, I'll uh, reveal the printing time. Now the total printing time for the Grom on the end of five uh, S1 was 36 hours. Um, and that wasn't 36 continuous hours. Uh, 
as I said, I don't run prints through the night. Yeah, you might feel okay about doing that, but uh, personally, I like to keep an eye on them. Um, my CR10 that I had previous to the, this, which has gone to a good home, um, a friend at the club, uh, uh, he's bought one and he's wanting to do uh, lots of this as well. So uh, on my CR10, uh, um, if I'd have printed it that, it would have taken 52 hours. And I'm sure I could probably get this probably lower than that by increasing the uh, print speed. But I didn't want to push things too much to start with. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if you were brand new to this, if you got the end of 5S one, you could print this off without any issues at all. And, uh, and so I think, you know, if you go that route, you shouldn't have any problems at all. I followed all the recommended settings by um, uh, Skyglide FPV. So I followed their recommendations for the slicer, the slicer settings, and just did everything without making any adjustments and it all worked fine. Now there's just one caveat with uh, 3D printing uh, RC aircraft. If you're new to RC aircraft, I wouldn't recommend this to start with. Um, when you're learning, you will crash. Now, th these are getting better and they do survive a bit better, but they're not as durable as foamies or bolsa planes. So you really need to be able to get your wings first, make sure you can fly okay, and then move on to this. And the thing with these now is you can, there's some awesome models around. I mean, I just keep looking at different ones and what I can print. And, uh, and I do use a lot of 3D printing on my uh, other models as well. So nearly all my models have got some 3D printing. So not only can you print models, you can print spare parts. Um, my Fock Wolf 190, which is just above us at the moment, <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. Um, I lost a spinner for that, or not long after I got it. So I contacted the supplier in the UK to get a new one. I says, have you got a new one? No. When will you get one in? Don't know. Keep trying. I thought, well, that was good. So uh, I'll put a I did an article and uh, I think I did a video on it as well. I put a link up, so um, I, I made my own spinner. A little bit challenging at the time, but uh, it's well worth it. And now I've got that file. If I ever lose a spinner again, I just pop it on and print another one. So with a 3D printer, you've got your own spares department. And I print loads of things now, you know, motor mounts, um, hatch covers, you know, all sorts. So I'll, I'll put some pictures up, show you some of the things that I've printed. You know, initially when I first started, I thought, would I really use a 3D printer? And I just use it all the time now. You know, the, the more and more things I can think of, I can print. And I use it a lot for the for the foam cutter as well. There's lots of parts on the foam cutter that have been 3D printed as well. And so would I recommend the uh, Creative Ender 3S one? Yeah, without, without a doubt. It's, it's certainly uh, the best printer I've ever had and it, it works really well. Now, if that is a bit too much for your budget, then there are uh, cheaper printers around and there's not many bad 3D printers around now so you know what I would do was if you're thinking about getting into it go for one of the popular makes and uh, something like an, end, uh, an Ender 3 I mean some of the Ender 3s now you can get them for I think around about £150 but when you get the cheaper printers you probably will have to spend a little bit more time trying to get them dialed in and working whereas this one here I mean I almost call this a plug and play printer you know I just put the stuff in and it, and it worked and I think as an RC modeler that's what we want you, you know we don't want to be spending hours trying to get things to work I mean I have done that and it can be frustrating so thanks again to Creality for supplying the printer and uh, you know I'm very grateful for them for doing that and uh, hope you enjoyed the video and it's give you some thoughts for 3D printing I know I've got a, a list as long as my arm but uh, don't tell the wife <laughs> She didn't know about the Mustang one. I had that up on a shelf and I brought that down. She says, what's that? Well, I says, that's one I printed earlier. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so thanks for watching guys. And I'll catch you in the next video. And the next video, hopefully is gonna be the maiden flight of this, which hopefully goes really well. Um, I'm, I'm reasonably confident with it having iron nav in there as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.